<clears throat> I can't hear. Leading off for Fargo North, third base for number 11, Blake Anderson. Well, good afternoon and welcome to Matson Field as they get ready for this crosstown rivalry between the Moorhead Spuds and the Fargo North Spartans. Blake Anderson steps in to lead off for Fargo North and he takes a chase at the first ping, at the first pitch to miss and it's strike one. He'll be followed by Austin Sparrow and then Caden Headley. On the mound this afternoon for Moorhead Noah Pilon and he delivers a called strike two and is quickly ahead now two strikes to count on Blake Anderson. Eight and five on the year for Fargo North. The Spuds taking their first loss of the year this past Saturday against Eden Prairie. Now six and one as the fly ball is lifted towards left field. And Kai Holm is over and in foul territory makes the catch. And there's one away here to start Next the first the inning. Spartans. First baseman number 16, Austin Sparrow. That brings up Austin Sparrow, the number two batter. In the order, bats from the left side, Fargo North first baseman. Austin Sparrow stand again, waiting. Straightaway stance, uh, deep in the box, and takes a look at a pitch outside, ball one. Moorhead, early on, playing the outfield straightaway. Infield back and waiting on the outfield grass as the pitch delivered. Nubbed at the plate and fouled toward the third base dugout and out of play, and Austin Sparrow now has a count of a ball and a strike. Wind blowing this afternoon from left to right and a rather brisk breeze blowing from left field to right field as Austin Sparrow waits and Noah Pilon delivers as he goes fastball and at the knees, a called strike. One and two the count now on Austin Sparrow. Caden Headley waiting in the on-deck circle and here's Pilon's pitch and this is followed straight back into the screen. Game time temperature not quite at 50 degrees. As we were driving in, it looked to be about 48 degrees. And with that brisk breeze blowing, somewhat uncomfortable at times. But this is baseball, and let's get after it. From the left side, here is Austin Sparrow waiting. As Pilon winds and delivers, and it's nubbed to the left side. Third baseman Crisato D'Agostino is on his way over to Isaac Heckemeyer Howe. And 5-3 on the putout, and there are two away. Isaac Heckemeyer Howe getting his first baseball activity of the season. Base number 14, Caden Headley. After a very successful hockey high school season, going on to play juniors, now is eligible and is at first base this afternoon for Moorhead as Caden Headley steps in. Fargo North right fielder. And he hits one to the right side. Second baseman Hayden Netland is over, and it's a 1-2-3 inning to get things underway. And with that, after one half inning of play, it's Fargo North nothing and Moorhead coming to bat. Center fielder number six, Caden Triggs. Spuds come to bat in the bottom of the first inning, and Caden Triggs will lead thing off. Spuds center fielder takes a look at a uh, 
Pitch just missing inside, and it's ball one the count. Caden Trace will be followed by Thomas Horan and then Sterling Hafey, who this afternoon is the designated hitter. And the pitch. Bounce to the left side. Pick up there by second base and on the way in. Recorded 4-3 on the putout as Gabe Duncan was there to pick up the two bouncer. Headed on Next over to ball. Austin Sparrow. So 4-3 on the putout and here's Thomas Horan. Starting pitcher this afternoon, Hayden Thompson, a right-hander, long, leaky right-hander, and he delivers up and in tight for ball one. Hayden Thompson back on and ready, peers in for the sign and delivers, and this one is lifted towards center, had come in on it just a bit, and Peyton Fisher is there, a couple of steps in on the play and the fly out there, and there are two away. Next up for your spuds, your designated hitter, number 14, Sterling Hafey. Number three batter in the order, Sterling Hafey, the designated hitter this afternoon, and he's a left-handed hitter. As he stands deep in the batter's box and waits on the pitch from Thompson and a strike at the letters. Just catching the inside corner, Hayden Thompson ahead on the count. And the pitch. Popped up towards the left side and behind the third base dugout and out of play. Count goes now to two strikes on Moorhead's designated hitter, Sterling Hafey. As Peyton Thompson delivers. Just missing inside. Looked to be letter high, but just missing on the inside part of the plate, and it's a ball and two strikes. Sterling Hafey with a good eye back in the box quickly. Hayden Thompson delivers, and it's bounced right up in front and off to the right side and then caught foul. It was rolling, it was rolling, and north catcher Joe Butane caught up to it before it was able to roll back into the field of play, and the count stays at one and two. With two out, Sterling Hafey. Takes a look at a pitch down low, missing at the knees, and the count evens up at two and two. Fargo North shading the outfield a little bit to the left. Uh, infield playing straight away. And the pitch is down low for ball three, and the count goes full now on Hafey. Tap of the plate and the swing and the pitch now looking on, and this one is lifted towards right center field. Lazy fly ball over to his right to make the catch. Right fielder. Play your spuds in the first inning. No runs on no hits. No errors. No runners left on. After one complete. Kind of score. North zero. Your spuds zero. Caden Headley making that catch on the play, and it's a one, two, three inning for Hayden Thompson. After one inning of play, it's Moorhead nothing, Fargo North nothing. Leading out for North in the second inning, center fielder number eight, Peyton Fisher. After a one, two, three first inning, Noah Pilon ready to start the second inning of play against left heading hitty center fielder Peyton Fisher. And the pitch, 
Just miss against side. And ball one, the count now on Fisher. Batting fourth in the lineup will be followed by Joe Butane and Jack Dorsher. Joe Pilon. And the pitch is fouled straight back. A ball and a strike now on Peyton Fisher. Wind continues to blow strong from left to right here at Matson Field. As Peyton Fisher waits and Noah Pilon delivers. And at the letters, just catching the inside corner for called strike. And that's a ball and two strikes now on Peyton Fisher. Pilon delivers. Popped up. Off to the right side. White Gunkel is over, and it pops out of his glove. He was there. He had to come back on it. It sailed back inside on him, and it popped out of his glove just as he was ready to put on the squeeze. And Peyton Fisher stays alive, and it's a ball two strikes. I suppose that will be counted as an error. Let's not. <laughs> well, nobody uh, advanced a base or anything, so... He has a new at bat, though, as yep. the play. There's a called strike, or a swinging miss strike, rather, on Peyton Fisher. And so surviving that little pop-up drop, Fisher, or Noah Pilon comes back and delivers a this fastball is swinging missing. Picture. Peyton Fisher is one out. Joe Here's Joe Boutain. Batting fifth, and the Fargo North catcher Joe Boutain. Noah Pilon delivers, and a bunt right out in front. They'll call that a foul ball as it hit. Joe Boutain, as he tried to get out of the batter's box, it came right back up into him, and that's a strike. Boutain yeah, will be followed by Jack Dorsher. Yeah, otherwise it, it was a decent bunt. I mean, he got it to the ground quickly, but he was trying to beat that out for a base hit, and so because he left the box so quickly, that, that ball came four, up and, and hit him. Dorsher. He was out of oh. the out of the box when it hit him. Yeah. Okay. okay. Yep. Initially, it appeared as though the uh, ball came back in while he was in the batter's box, but the umpire they're ruling that he was already had already vacated the batter's box, and the ball came back to him in the field of play, and so there are two outs. And here comes Jack Dorsher, the left fielder, batting sixth in the order. Pitch missing down low from Noah Pilon. Isaac Henkemeyer Howe deep at first near the outfield grass. And the pitch swing and a miss. And a ball and a strike now on Jack Dorsher. Batting here with two out in the top of the second inning. And this one is sent towards left center field. A nice running play by Kai Holm coming over from his left field spot, runs it down to make the catch. And it is a one, two, three second inning for Noah Pilon. After an inning and a half, it is Moorhead nothing and Fargo North nothing. Come enjoy.
Hutton at first on the air. A hard hit ball to the left side of That's third baseman, first baseman nine, Blake Anderson. And it just came out of his glove and couldn't make the play and the Spuds have a runner on at first. Yeah, hard hit ball, but definitely a, a makeable play. So it has to be an error on the third baseman. His first at bat of the season, Isaac Hankemeyer Howe takes a look at a pitch bouncing in the dirt. Hayden Netland will scamper on to second on the wild pitch. And now the Spuds have a runner at second base with Isaac Hankemeyer Howe batting here on the bottom of the second inning. Straightaway stance, power hitting first baseman today. He's a third baseman, he's a catcher. And this one is to the left side, picked up by shortstop. And the play is made as Mike Hallquist got it across. But on the play, Hayden Netlin moves on to third. Next up for you, Spuds, your catcher, number two, Wyatt Gunkel. That brings up the catcher, Wyatt Gunkel. Batting now with one out and a runner down at third. Spuds are, have a runner in scoring position as this one is lined into left field for a base hit. Hard hit ball in the first pitch by Wyatt Gunkel. He'll get an RBI, and the run batted in. Hayden Netland coming in to That's score for the fight. game's first run, and it's one nothing Moorhead. Yeah, three pretty hard to hit balls are already this inning. The first one, uh, granted, was in error, but uh, it was a hard hit ball, and then uh, Hinkemeyer Howe moving, uh, moving Netland over on a nice hard hit ground ball to uh, the shortstop, and now this one a base hit to left field. Here's Kai Holm batting now with a runner at first and a run in. A quick toss over. Hayden Thompson, a good strong look. Spuds have shown a tendency to put some pressure on the defense as they show a st possible steal attempt here. As Hayden Thompson takes a look. Another throw over, but back in time. Hayden Thompson peering in to the stretch with a check of the runner at first. And the pitch now by Thompson is swung on and fouled straight back. Your courtesy runner for the Spuds, number 22, Jack Shaw. Now running for Moorhead, Jack Shaw is on at first as he runs for, he is a courtesy runner here for Isaac Hinkemeyer Howe. And a quick throw. Over, but again, Schaub gets back just in time. A lead at first by Schaub. Thompson with a check. And the delivery, and Schaub is on his way. Here's the throw down. It appears to be in time. Yes, it is. He caught him up at the shoulders on the slide in, and Schaub is caught stealing. 2-4 on the put out, and there are two away. The count is even here at 1-1 one and one on Kai Holm, who bats now with nobody out after a run scores, and it's 1-0 Moorhead. And the inning continues here in the second, and this one is lifted towards right center field. This one's going a long ways, and it bounces in the gap. Holm is on his way to second. He's going to try for three. There will be a play, but the throw is way high and away. And a good backup along the near side by Hayden Thompson, the pitcher, backing up the play, prevented a run from scoring. But a triple here in the bottom of the second inning by Kai Holm. Next up for your spuds, third baseman, number 26. Another hard hit ball this time by Kai Holm. And, and like you said, Larry, you can't say enough about that backup play by Hayden Thompson because otherwise that's headed into the Moorhead dugout. Here's a little blooper down the right field line, but foul as it swerved away and towards the fence area. Kai Holm on at third. One strike to count now on Crescento D'Agostino, Moorhead's third baseman. Here's the pitch, and this one is fouled to the left side. And two strikes to count now on D'Agostino, Moorhead's third baseman. Spuds have hit the ball well here in the second inning. And have coaxed a run in as Holm takes his lead off third and the pitch is up high. A ball and two strikes now on Crisanto D'Agostino. Here's the stretch. 
And the pitch. And this one is lifted towards right field. Back and in front of the warning track. Caden Headley is there for the catch. And the Spuds are out of the second inning, but a run has scored. And after two innings complete, it is Moorhead one and Fargo North nothing. Fargo North zero, your Moorhead Spuds. We go to the top of the third inning and Fargo North has been shut down. Six up and six down through two innings of play in the third inning. Gabe Duncan will lead things off followed by the designated hitter Dan Boutain and then shortstop Mike Hallquist. Moorhead manufacturing a run taking advantage of an error in the second inning. And Gabe Duncan leads things off here in the top of the third. Noah Pilon delivers. And the bond attempt is tipped back and hung on to by Wyatt Kunkel. And so strike one the count. Sun is becoming, sunshine is becoming a factor in right field as it's glared. There's a bouncer to the right side and picked up by Hayden Netland and on to first to Hankemeyer Howe for the out. 4-3 on the putout. And there's one away as Dan Boutain, the designated hitter, comes to bat. Well, Hayden Netland, very good, uh, well, very good baseball player all around, but defensively, especially the last couple of games, he's played very well. Noah Pilon delivers a pitch down low. One ball to count. Yeah, we started to mention the uh, sun is glaring brightly into right field and center. And the shadows are starting to extend past the third base, but it's going to be a while before that becomes a factor as the pitch is out of the strike zone for ball two. Dan Boutain standing in and waiting. Here's Noah Pilon's delivery. And missing outside for ball three. Straight out in the, in the batter's box. And the pitch to Boutain is a called strike. Dan Boutain. Yeah, Boutain taking all the way on that 3-0 pitch. And with the count, three and one, Noah Pilon ready and delivers. And it's fouled at the plate. He just did get a piece of it. It comes straight back, and so the count goes full now. On Dan Boutain, it's three balls and two strikes, batting here in the top of the third inning. Gabe Duncan grounding out to start the inning, and there's one away. Here's the pitch by Pilon, and a swing, and a miss, strike three. Dan Boutain down on strikes, and there are two away, and that brings up Mike Hallquist, the Next Fargo up, North the shortstop. shortstop. Seven, Mike Hallquist. And he bats in from the right side. Hallquist taking a look at the infield. He stands deep in the batter's box. Has Noah Pilon ready, and delivers a pitch foul straight back into the screen and it's one strike. Quick walk around the mound for Noah Pilon before he settles in. A quick blow on the hands to get things warmed up in this cool evening. Here's the pitch now by Pilon. And it's bounced to the left side. Shortstop Thomas Horan is up in the long throw across. It brings Hankemeyer Howe up the line just a bit, but he holds the bag, and the out recorded 6-3 on the putout. And after two and a half innings of play, it's Moorhead 1 and Fargo North nothing.
Out on the bottom of the third inning to the number nine batter, Caleb Sari. will lead things off playing right field today. Had a uh, sterling pitching performance against Eden Prairie on Saturday, only to come up short two to one. And bats here now in the bottom of the third inning and follows one off to the right side after taking a called strike on the first pitch. And it's 0-2 now on Caleb Sari. An unearned run by the Spuds in the second inning, leading it here one nothing. As the pitch in the dirt. Deep in the batter's box, just short of the backside as Sari waits and Thompson delivers. Called strike three. He watched that one go by and uh, Caleb Sari is down on strikes to start the third inning and there's one away. And to the top of the order now, Caden Triggs who That's bounced out to second in the first bat seven, inning. Number six, Caden Triggs. A good series of pitches there for Hayden Thompson. Uh, coming up with his first strikeout of the night. So Thompson is ready and set to go, and he bounces one up to the plate, and that one's in the dirt. Caden Triggs batting here in the bottom of the third with a 1-0 lead. Seems to be a little more chatter out of the Moorhead uh, <laughs> lineup here in the, in the uh, first base dugout with their Crosstown opponent on the other side, Fargo North. I won't say it's trash talk. You well, can draw your own conclusion. <laughs> well, you know, any any time Moorhead and Fargo teams uh, meet up, you know, a lot of these kids know each other. Oh, absolutely. That? So that's uh, a lot of times just some playful banter. Uh, that's the better word for it. I appreciate that. Playful banter between Fargo North and Moorhead here. And the pitch delivered on a called strike. You know, a good breaking pitch there by Thompson. Uh, started out up high and then broke down into the zone. Tough pitch to hit. Thompson delivers. Just missing inside. Count goes two and two. Two balls and two strikes on center fielder Caden Triggs. As he waits, here's Thompson pitch, and that one's in the dirt, and the count is full. Now it's three and two. Hayden Thompson ready. He peers over his glove for the sign and delivers. And this one is lined into left center field and that drops. Skips right in to the left fielder, Jack Dorsher, who scoops it up and throws it in quickly and holds the play to a single and Caden Next Triggs is on at first. Well, Dorsher did a very nice job of keeping that ball in front of him. It, it kind of short hopped him and you saw him take a, kind of an infielder stance on it and just keeping his chest square to the ball and was able to keep that ball in front and keep Caden uh, Triggs to a single. Thomas Horan batting here. Moorhead shortstop flew out to center field in the in first inning. And again, Moorhead is putting some pressure on Hayden Thompson, drawing the throw, Caden Triggs, back in safely. Thomas Horan from the left side. Moorhead shortstop, here's the pitch, and he squares to bunt, but it's foul tipped at the plate. And one strike to count. The pitcher was up and above the letters, and it was very difficult to put that one in play, and so it skipped foul. One strike to count now on Thomas Horan. Hayden Thompson into the stretch, and a check of the runner. Here's a throw over. And just back in time, Caden Triggs. Now the Spuds being alert on the, the base paths. They got picked off a couple of times against Eden Prairie in the in the last game. And again, a check of the runner, and the pitch by Thompson is sailed up and away. Thomas Horan watched that one go eyelids by, and the count is even up at one and one. Into the uh, game Saturday as a 333 hitter struggled a bit against uh, Strateski and is looking to get his batting average back on track here this afternoon against Fargo North, 0 for 1 in the first. Thomas Aran batting now with a one ball, one strike count in the bottom of the third inning as the pitch is delivered up and inside, and it's two and one. Haran is waiting, and Thompson delivers. Called strike. 
at the letters and on the inside part of the plate, and it's two and two. Yeah, that's that breaking pitch again. Start, starts, it looks like it's going to be up high, and then it breaks down into the zone. Hayden Thompson on the 2-2 two -two pitch. Throws over to first. He had him leaning, but was able to get back in time. Caden Triggs was making a move towards second, and the throw was up a bit. Had that one been down low and right around knee level, it would have been a close, close play. But now the 2-2 two -two count. As Hayden Thompson again with the run, and the runner is on its way. Here's a throw down to second, and this one not in time, and Caden Triggs will get the stolen base. And the pitch out of the strike zone brings the count full now at three and two on Thomas Horan. Spuds with a one nothing lead. Horan waits, Thompson delivers. Bouncer to the right side and just wide of first down the right field line and foul. Coach Kunkka having to be nimble again to he avoid that didn't ground work. ball. He didn't work. <laughs> He tried to be nimble. <laughs> <laughs> Here's the pitch, and that hits the batter. Thomas Saran getting hit. And he'll head down to first base on the hit by pitch. And runners are now at first and second. Next up for your spuds, your designated hitter, number 14, Sterling Hafey. That brings up the designated hitter, Sterling Hafey, batting third in the order. He was a fly ball out in the third inning, or in the first inning, rather, to end the first inning. Sterling Hafey batting here now from the left side. And the pitch up high. Ball won the count now on Sterling Hafey. Spuds with a run in. In the second inning, now runners at first and second. And their pitch goes inside for ball two. Hayden Netland waiting on deck. Sterling Hafey waits. And Hayden Thompson, a check, a double check of the runner at second and delivers that one up near the chin and inside for ball three. Well, you've got Sterling Hafey at the uh, plate, designated hitter, number three hitter, and a 3 old count. And that pitch is down low for ball four, and that loads the bases. A walk to Sterling Hafey, moves Thomas around down to second. It moves Caden Triggs down to third. And that brings up Hayden Netland. Scored the game's only run, reached on an error in the second inning, advanced to second on a wild pitch, and then was driven in by Wyatt Gunkel. And that brings Jeff Fickner out to the mound as he has a consultation here with the bases loaded and one out. Yeah, good opportunity for Moorhead to put up uh, multiple runs in the inning when you've got the bases loaded. Anything to the outfield should get you one, even if it's a, a sacrifice fly, but if it's a hit, good chance of scoring two. The visit doesn't last long as Hayden Thompson has loaded the bases with a single, a hit by a hit batter, and now a walk. Next up for your spuds, second baseman number 16, Hayden Netland. Hayden Netland is the cleanup batter. And the pitch. At the letters and just catching the outside part of the plate for strike one, Hayden Netland. And Hayden Thompson ahead of the count now at a 1 1. Here's the pitch. And a swing and a miss for strike two. And the stretch by Thompson. The pitch is up and away. Well, really a, a nice job by Thompson there. The, the first pitch, he got uh, a, a pitch that was a little bit high on the high end of the strike zone and just was climbing the, the ladder. And, and he delivers yeah, a call strike three. So settling down nicely, Hayden Thompson comes back after getting into some trouble. And he has a chance now of getting out of the inning as Hayden Netland strikes out for out number two. Yeah, really a great series of pitches there for Thompson as he climbed the ladder with the first three and then came back with the breaking ball. Isaac Henkemeyer Howe grounded out to short in his first at bat. This one has bounced back, and we've got a force at home. It'll go one, two, 
on the putout of Caden Triggs. Isaac Heckemeyer Howe on it for will, uh, will be credited with a fielder's choice. And the Spuds put bases loaded but do not score. And after three innings of uh, play, it is Moorhead one and Fargo North nothing. With possession on the near side, Caleb Alderson. Caleb Alderson down low to Jackson score. Now back out on top. Here's a shot and a goal. Moorhead's first goal, first lead in their program history. Kenny Boney is going to get the goal. And the Spuds. The Spuds go on top of Sartell. The leadoff hitter, third baseman, number 11, Blake Anderson. To the top of the order, Blake Anderson leading off the fourth inning for Fargo North as he takes a look out at Noah Pilon, who has been perfect so far, nine up, nine down through three. And Pilon comes in with a strike at the knees to get ahead of Blake Anderson starting off the fourth inning. Noah Pilon working quickly here as he goes to the delivery and swing and a miss and it's strike two. Blake Anderson flew out in the first inning to start the game. Has fallen behind here now at 0-2. Somewhat open stance and the pitch missing just outside. And we've seen in the last couple of games by Moorhead pitchers and their opponent pitchers with a two strike count, not afraid to nibble the corner just in case they wanted to give it a chase. Here's Noah Pilon with the delivery, and that one is outside, and it goes to two and two. And quite frankly, that's elementary baseball. Well, that's what you want to do as a, a pitcher on an, an 0-2 count. You don't want to give the batter anything too good to hit. Oh, except to uh, hear uh, You don't want to do that either. <laughs> you don't want to do that either as the pitch came in right into the back of Blake Anderson, who will head on to first base now on a hit by pitch. Picks up for Fargo North. Yeah, Pilon really, I mean, didn't have a, a bad Farrell. series of pitches there. Uh, just tried to come back inside on that, that pitch, and it got away from him. Got away, and there's a runner on it first now as Austin Sparrow checks in. He grounded out to third in the first inning. Number two batter in the order, Fargo North. First baseman, Austin Sparrow. As Noah Pilon goes to the stretcher, a runner at first, and here's the pitch, and it's bounced foul. And he is out as he was out of the batter's box and up the line when it came back and hit him. And that was a play we saw against in the first inning as well. And, uh, or in the second inning rather. And again, we'll see that the uh, bunt attempt will result in an out as he was, he ran into the ball as it was in the field of play. Austin Sparrow. Jeff Fickner again over to Kind of question the play and make sure that's that he, the right it was called 14, correctly. Yeah, and that's such a, a difficult. That's a tough call. It is. It, I mean, it was really close. It's hard to tell if, you know, certainly from our vantage point, not looking up the line, you know, we can't tell from here if it uh, if he was in the field of play or not. But the official or the umpire very quick from behind the plate to make the call. Caden Headley bats now with one out and a runner at first here in the fourth inning. And the throw over is not in time. Blake Anderson back in safely. <clears throat> Caden Headley, the right fielder, popped up to second in the first inning. Noah Pilon 
And again, the throw over. Anderson back in time and waiting to see his first pitch, Caden Headley. From the right side and the pitch. And that's a called strike as he caught the corner. Infield in just a bit here now in double play depth. As Noah Pilon goes to the stretch and checks the runner at first. And the pitch is swung on and fouled at the plate. And it's quickly two strikes the count now on Caden Headley. Home plate umpire after that last bouncer at the plate was asked to please clean, make the corners more available. And here's the look out by Caden Headley as Noah Pilon goes to the stretch and delivers. And it's bounced to the left side. Shortstop Thomas Horan. And he just did get the force at second base. That throw was up the line and to the right side from Thomas Horan. But Next second baseman there. Hayden Netland was Seven able to keep his feet on the play and uh, make the catch and the force out there. And there are two out. And that brings up Peyton Fisher. Yeah, another good defensive play there by Netland. That throw just off target. I think uh, Horan felt a little bit hurried because it was kind of a slow roller to the shortstop. And so he rushed the throw a little bit. And it, it came off the line, but Headland, uh, Netland did a nice job of keeping his foot on the bag. Noah Pilon's pitch to Peyton Fisher in the dirt, and it's one, uh, ball one. A strikeout victim in the second inning, Peyton Fisher. North center fielder, left-handed hitter, deep, deep in the batter's box. As Noah Pilon has a check of the runner, and here's the delivery and a swing and a miss. And a delayed attempt down to first, and as a result, he got in safely. And so Caden Headley now down at second. Yep. He, he did not break immediately and waited kind of for the nonchalant throw back to the pitcher, and that was all he needed. Yeah, very good delayed steal, executed perfectly. One and one the count on Peyton Fisher. Swing and a miss, strike two. Moorhead with a 1-0 lead. Fargo North batting here, top of the fourth inning. And as he peers in, Noah Pilon is ready. The stretch now. And a look at the runner at second, and here's the delivery fouled straight back and into the screen. One and two, the count. Good position on that fastball uh, by Pilon, keeping that down in the zone making the batter Fisher cut, try to reach down. It's a lot more difficult to handle as a batter. With two out, Peyton Fisher waits and nubs onto the left side. Picked up by D'Agostino. Now throw on to first is there in time. A stretch by Hankemeyer Howe just did get up the line to make the catch. 5-3 on the put out. And after three and a half innings of play, it is Moorhead one and Fargo North nothing.
Moorhead comes to bat in the bottom of the fourth inning with a one nothing lead. Loaded the bases in the third, but couldn't muster a way out. And so to start things out in the bottom of the fourth, North has made a pitching change as that brings in Gabe Duncan on in relief. And like Hayden Thompson, a lanky right-hander. Gabe Duncan on, now to pitch. And a quick visit out at the mound by Joe Boutain as he gets ready to settle back in behind the plate and wait. Turning out the fourth inning for your spuds, your catcher, number two, Wyatt Dunkel. Thompson gave up three hits and one unearned run in three innings of pitching. And here is Gabe Duncan. Wyatt Gunkel is at the bat, and he looks at a pitch up and away for a called strike. Wyatt Gunkel had a base hit and drove in the game's only run. And that came, <coughs> pardon me, that came in the second inning. And the pitch. At the knees and at the outside corner called strike. White Gunkel watching that one sail by, and it's one and one. Oh, we've had some fielding changes for North as well. We'll try to catch up to that as that pitch is up and away. Now, sometimes when you come in, in in relief, it takes you a little bit to get a feel for that breaking pitch. And the pitch. Swing and a miss. Gabe Duncan has evened up the count after delivering that, and it's two and two. To the stretch, or to the windup rather, on the pitch, and that one is up and away, and the count goes full now at three and two. Wyatt Gunkel, base hit, driving in a run, in his last at bat, goes down on strikes, and at the knees, called strike three on Wyatt Gunkel, and there's one away. Here's Kai Holm, who hit a triple in his last at bat. Duncan doing a nice job on that that last pitch. Uh, you, you saw him during that bat struggle with the uh, breaking pitch and went to the fastball for the strikeout. Gabe Duncan delivers that one up and out of the strike zone, ball one. One nothing more hit. Batting here, bottom of the fourth. Gabe Duncan on in relief for North. And the pitch, just missing down low. That was a good pitch by Duncan. That yeah, was. At home, watched and with his good eye, goes to two and zero. Oh. And Duncan, working quickly, delivers that one up and away, and it's three and zero. Oh. Left-handed hitting Kai home, and Duncan's pitch is sailed up and away, and that's ball four. And Kai home now on first on the base on balls. Next up for your spuds. Your third baseman, number 26, Casato Deagostino. Sometimes when you don't get a call as a, as a pitcher, you know, that second, that second pitch looked awfully close, and, and sometimes that can just disrupt your entire uh, at-bat against that, that particular hitter. Casato D'Agostino flew out to right field in the second inning, takes a look at called strike one to start this at-bat here in the bottom of the fourth, batting with a runner down at first after Kai Holm drew a base on balls. Abe Duncan delivers. Check swing, called strike. I think that was a strike whether it was swung at or not, and it's 0-2. And, Number eight batter, Crescento D'Agostino could be followed by Caleb Sari. Avoid if the uh, Spuds are able to avoid a double play with the lead now at first. And on his way, this one is lifted towards right field. And this one is carrying deep. This one is at the base of the fence. We've got a runner up at third, and he'll have to stop there as the play comes in. That one kept uh, sailing and sailing and finally came down at the base of the fence. And of course, Kai Holm had to hold up and wait to see if it might be caught. And once he realized it was gonna drop in, point. he ends up right at third. And uh, Gustino ends up at second with a double. And that brings up Caleb Sari. 
Yeah, what wind there is is blowing out to right field, and as uh, D'Agostino got under that ball, it just kept carrying to the fence. And this one has popped up towards center field. There's going to be a run to come in, and it got away as it popped out of the glove of Peyton Fisher, and the throw comes back into the catcher, and that put Moorhead now has runners at second and third with a run in. All right, official score, Mr. DeLorme. Well, it was difficult to see if it if it touched his glove, but it I, did. I, okay, well then it's then it's an error for sure. Next up for your spuds, center fielder number six, Caden Chase. And Caleb Sorry reaching on that error at, uh, ends up at second base. A run has scored. It will not be an RBI. Scoring on the air, and here comes Caden Triggs. Spuds have grabbed a 2-0 lead. A little chess match going on between D'Agostino at third and pitcher Gabe Duncan. Here's a fly ball towards center. Catch is made, tag of third, and here's the runner coming all the way in. Sacrifice fly scoring D'Agostino and the Spuds now lead it three to nothing. Next up for your Spuds, shortstop, number seven, Thomas Horan. That will be a run batted in for Caden Triggs. On the fly to center. And with that, there are two out and here's Thomas Horan who flew out in the first and was hit by the pitch in the third inning. Left-handed hitting shortstop. Spuds with a runner now at second. Here's the pitch. Catching the corner for a called strike. Bottom of the order getting the job done here for Moorhead in the fourth inning. A walk, a double, an error, and a fly ball sacrifice fly, and two runs are in. One and one, the count now on Horan. Check of the runner at second, and here's the pitch. Swing and a miss. A ball and two strikes now on Thomas Horan. A very good breaking pitch by Duncan, uh, something he struggled with when he first started the inning here. Looks to have command now. This one is bounced to the left side. Third baseman there to pick it up, and a long throw across is not in time as Thomas Horan hustled all the way out of the batter's box and down the line to reach safely. And that'll go as an infield base hit for Thomas Horan. Next up for your studs, designated hitter, number 14, Sterling Hafey. And that brings up the designated hitter, Sterling Hafey. With a fly out on the first and a walk in the third inning. Batting here with th two runs in in the inning and a three nothing lead. Runners at the corners and the throw over to first is not in time. Horan diving back in safely. Sterling Hafey, left-handed hitting, designated hitter this afternoon. Here's the stretch and the pitch as the runner goes and the throw back to third is just back in time. Well, oftentimes we'll see that quick throw back to the pitcher trying to catch the runner leaning the wrong way, but this time back at third. And back in safely, Caleb Sari. And here's a fly ball into short right center field and a running catch made by Caden Headley. And two runs come in for the Spuds and after four innings of play, it is Moorhead three and Fargo North nothing. Spartan zero. Nick Hastings comes up with it, sends it out. Here's Nolan Russell. 
Moradez worked their way to a 3 nothing lead after four innings of play, and so we go to the top of the fifth inning, and here's catcher Joe Boutin. Bounced out in front, ran into a bunt attempt in the second inning, and so 0 for 1 here this afternoon. Takes a look and uh, swings at the first pitch and missing. Strike one the count. As Pilon delivers. And just missing outside on the on the pitch, and it's one and one. Noah Pilon got the game underway. Nine up and nine down, and then gave up a walk, and the first base runner actually stopped the first 10 batters that came to bait before a base hit by Caden, or uh, nine up, and the uh, hit by pitch, rather. In the fourth inning, the first mark against Noah Pila on the count now has gone to two and two. Yeah, broke up the perfect game. Here's the look now by Noah Pilon and the delivery. Towards left field and a running diving catch out of left by Kai Holm. That one was diving down in front, but Kai Holm with a nice run to the ball to pull it in for the out. Dorsher. And that brings up Jack Dorsher. Well, Holm got a great break on the ball. It was very sharply hit by Boutain, but right at Kai Holm, and he had a good break on it and was able to make the catch. Here's Dorsher. Pitch inside. Flew out to left uh, to Kai Holm, and his at bat in the second inning, 0 for 1. As Noah Pilon delivers. Bounce to the left side. D'Agostino had that one get under his glove and into left field, and that's a base hit for Jack Dorsher. Yep, good hit, uh, tough play for D'Agostino uh, going to his right uh, towards the line, and uh, again, Kai Holm showing some hustle to get over and hold that to a single. First hit of the afternoon for Fargo North. Jack Dorsher on now. At first, and here is Gabe Duncan. Bouncing it to the right side. We've got a force at second to play there, and back to first is not in time. Nice hustle down the path by Gabe Duncan, who reaches on the fielder's choice, and there are two away with the force out at second. Next up for the Spartans, second baseman, number three, Dan Boutain. Yeah, it's always nice to, to see hustle out of the batter's box, and Duncan... You know, not conceding that that was going to be a, a double play. Uh, hustling all the way, beat out the return throw to keep the ir inning alive. With the pitching change made earlier in the uh, fourth, in the third inning, Dan Boutain is now the first baseman. And he stands in from the right side, Dan Boutain. Started the game out as the designated hitter and registered a strikeout in the third. Here's the pitch down low. Gunkel had that one, had to have double clutch on it. It uh, hit the dirt, pulled it up, had it drop away, pulled it up. It's thrown on to second, not nearly in time. Stolen base there for Gabe Duncan, puts a runner at second. Batting here with two out. Here's a fly ball to straightaway center field, and Caden Triggs is there. Waits and makes the catch. And so the Spartans put a runner on at second, stranded there. As we go through four and a half innings of play, it is Moorhead three and Fargo North nothing.
Morehead comes to bat in the bottom of the fifth inning. Starting out for your spuds in the fifth inning. And Hayden Netland, second Morehead's base second baseman, will lead things off. Pepper. All for two on the day, reached on an error, and then scored the game's first run in the second, striking out in the third as the spuds left the bases loaded. They have since added two more runs in the fourth inning as Netland lifts that one to the right side, and it's foul as it clears the fence in the right field along the foul line. And it's one strike to count on Hayden Netland. Sterling Hafey, the designated hitter, batting for pitcher Noah Pilon today. And he ended the fourth inning with a fly ball out. And to lead things off here in the fifth, Hayden Netland. And a one strike pitch is out of the strike zone for ball one. Gabe Duncan on in relief of Hayden Thompson for North. And the pitch, a bouncer. He's got a little bit too much curve on that one. It bounced down into the dirt and away. Well, yeah, to, to start um, Duncan's pitching performance, he was leaving those breaking balls up high. And now the, the last few, uh, he's been uh, down in the strike zone and that one just in the dirt. Here's a bouncer up the middle. Gathered in by the shortstop and then overthrown. And for a moment thought about going down to second, but did not. And so Hayden Netland will reach on the error of the throw Next up for your spuds. by base shortstop base Dave Mike Hallquist. And he's on at first base now as Isaac Henkemeyer Howe comes to bat 0 for 2 on the day. Yeah, kind of that, that whole play looked a little bit awkward. Uh, for Hallquist at, at shortstop, you know, just didn't have it cleanly in his glove and then couldn't get a good grip on the baseball. Here's the pitch down on the dirt and it gets away. Netland quickly on his way down to second base, checks in there. Joe Boutain catching up to that one as it rolled away, and it's ball one. So the Spuds have a runner down at second. Isaac Henkemeyer Howe. And that one bounced to the right side. A short hop there. And pitcher Gabe Duncan is there just in time. So it'll go 3 1 on the putout. And there's one away on the play. Hayden the Netland moves Wyatt on Gunkel. down to third. And here's Wyatt Gunkel. Drove in the game's first run with a base hit. Striking out on the fourth, one for two today, Wyatt Gunkel. Down the heart of the plate, taking a look at it while Gunkel sees strike one. As he waits, Duncan's pitch is flied to the left side. And short, so the wind is driving it all the way back in. A play that was looking to be an outfield fly is gathered in by Mike Hallquist at short on the dirt. Next up for your spuds, left fielder number five. Yeah, the, the five, flag out four. in center field is blowing a lot harder now uh, than it was to start the game. And certainly, I, I was with you, Larry. I thought that was going to be, you know, shallow left field, and it ended up being right at about the, where the shortstop plays on the infield. Yeah, normally, and he'll get credit for the catch. Pop up there to shortstop Mike Hallquist. And there are two away. And spuds, however, have a runner at third yet. And the first pitch in on Kai Holm is out of the strike zone for ball one. Pitch number two is out of the strike zone for ball two. Kai Holm with a triple in the second, drew a walk in the fourth and then scored. As he delivers the pitch and it is a line drive to the right side and hooking foul. Rolling all the way down into the right field corner. Well, a hitter's count at 2-0. and oh. Kai Holm found a pitch that he could handle, just uh, was a little bit out in front of it and pulled it foul. 2-1 and one the count now as Gabe Duncan looks in for the sign. Quick look at the runner at third and the pitch. And this one is fouled straight back, and the count evens up at 2-2. Two and 3-0, two. to nothing. Moorhead leading, batting here in the bottom of the fifth. Both teams back in action again tomorrow. Moorhead hosting Bemidji in a Section 8 doubleheader while Fargo North will take on Shanley. Here's a line drive to the left side, and that drops in for a base hit. 
Left fielder Jack Dorsher is there to play it back in. And an RBI single by Kai Holm. Hayden Netland trotting across with Moorhead's fourth run of the afternoon, and it's fourth nothing as Crisanto D'Agostino comes on to bat here in the bottom of the fifth. Really good piece of hitting there by Kai Holm having to wait on that breaking ball and then pushing it to left field. This one's popped up down the left field line. It's in foul territory. And third baseman Blake Anderson is there to make the catch just before running into the fence. And the Spuds are out of the fifth inning, but a run has scored. And after five innings of play, it is Moorhead four and Fargo North nothing. Was Kai all the way at third on that pop-up? Yeah, he was coming to third, yeah. On the pop-up, though, he hadn't didn't start out there. No, no, he was on first. Yeah, that's yeah. what I thought. Yeah, yeah, base hit to left field, yeah. yeah. And Fargo North will lead things Holquist. off with Mike Holquist in his only at bat. Finished up the third inning with a ground out. And bats here with a wide open stance. As the Spuds have made some defensive changes here, including at pitcher Chris Santo D'Agostino comes on to pitch here in the sixth inning. His first two pitches down and out of the strike zone for 2-0. D'Agostino, kind of a fire plug looking player. And this one is lined to the right side and foul. Just missed going over the bag. And Mike Hallquist checking back in now with a count of two and one. Yeah, very close to being extra bases there down the line, but Hallquist having a good look at it, realized right away that was foul. See if we can catch up on the other changes here. Hayden Netland has moved over to third. Noah Pilon now playing at second. As Crisanto D'Agostino has taken over on the mound. Here's the pitch. And missed inside. And it's three and one. Mike Hawquist standing in as he waits. The pitch up and out of the strike zone for ball four. And Mike Hawquist takes a walk to lead off the sixth inning, and that brings up Blake Anderson. Up to the top of the order for the Spartans. Third baseman, number two, Tyler Thresh. And a change for Fargo North in their last run through the uh, order. As Tyler Thresh comes on to play for Blake Anderson to lead off and pops one off to the right side, and the Spuds are there to make the play. Galeb Sorry floating in from right field and the catch made and Next there is one back. away. First baseman number 16, Austin Sparrow. A yeah, good play by Sorry. That's uh, a lot tougher than it looks into that sun. And you could tell he kind of, you know, hop, <coughs> excuse me, hopped a little bit when maybe he didn't need to, but that's uh, that's just the Well, the it's all in the presentation, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Here's Austin Sparrow. 
as he takes a look at a pitch just missing inside, ball one. First baseman, Austin Sparrow, 0 for 2. D'Agostino takes a look in, takes a check of the runner at first. And the pitch. Called strike as he caught the corner on the outside part of the plate. Austin Sparrow now at 1 and 1. Straight away in the outfield, straight away in the infield for Moorhead. Fargo North batting here, down 4 0 in the sixth inning. As D'Agostino delivers a swing and a miss. And now a ball and two strikes on Austin Sparrow. D'Agostino leaning in, looking for the sign. White Gunkel waits now for the pitch and the delivery. Called strike three. Fastball at the letters. And there are two away as Austin Sparrow goes down on strikes. Yeah, good pitch. I think Sparrow was expecting something off speed, and D'Agostino came back with a hard fastball and uh, just caught the corner. Here's Caden Headley. Now we made note earlier on that oftentimes with a two-strike count, they were nibbling at the corners, but that time D'Agostino came straight in, straight in and straight hard. Ball rolls away from Wyatt Gunkel as he retrieves it. Mike Hallquist makes his way down to second. So that puts a runner on at second. His Headley bats here with two out. North right fielder Caden Headley. D'Agostino takes a check of the runner at second and throws a pitch down in the dirt and it gets away. And another wild pitch puts, puts um, Mike Hawquist now at third. A walk and two wild pitches. Hawquist now at third with a count of two balls on Caden Headley. Wide open stance at the plate by Headley as he waits. Here's the pitch called strike. The shadows have extended onto the field now and have gone past the pitching mound, but still the sun glaring in right field. Here's a pitch, swing, and a miss. Count goes to two and two on Caden Headley. As D'Agostino looks in on the 2-2 pitch, called strike three, and that gets him out of the inning as the Spartans put a runner at third, but do not score. After five and a half innings of play, it's Moorhead four and Fargo North nothing. Well, and
Starting off with six standing for your spuds, right fielder number 24, Caleb Sari. Caleb Sari leads off the sixth inning for Moore at number nine batter in the order. 0 for 2 on the day as he struck out in the third and reached on an error and was stranded at third in the fourth as Caleb Sari and the Spuds face the third pitcher of the afternoon as Tom Wellen comes on now in relief for the Spuds and he also a lanky right-hander as he delivers his first two pitches out of the strike zone and it's quickly 2-0. Tom Wellen on to pitch now for North. And the 2-0 pitch, fly ball straight away center field. Peyton Fisher is back, camps underneath and makes the catch. Caleb Sari flying out and there is one away. Next up to bat for your spuds, number 25, Skyler Timmer. Pinch hitter now, Skyler Timmer, on to a bat for Caden Triggs. So Triggs this afternoon, one for three, and had a RBI, uh, an RBI a fly ball in the fourth, and gives way now to Skyler Timmer, who stands in from the right side. And the pitch from Wellen is grounded to the left side, left on the ground, and then reached up and thrown. And that will be an error on the near side by Tyler Thresh. And the uh, Spuds have a runner on at first now as Skyler Timmer reaches on the air. Yeah, Thresh had trouble with that the ground ball initially, and then, of course, uh, as he recovered from the ground ball, then forced the throw across. And that was off the mark as well. I don't think he would have gotten Timmer no. uh, anyway with the throw after bobbling the, the ground ball. But uh, good hustle by Timmer, uh, hustling right out of the box. And that brings up Mason Connolly, who is on to bat now for Thomas Horan, who leaves the game one for two. He flew out in the first, was hit by the pitch in the third, and had an infield single in the fourth. And here is Mason Connolly. His first pitch down in the zone. Second pitch is in the dirt. And it's 2-0. and oh. Moorhead batting here in the sixth inning with a 4-0 lead on north. Tim, and the pitch over, and Timmer's back safely. Tom Wellen with a quick release throw over to first, but Timmer watching and is back in. And now he eases his way off first on the lead. Tom Wellen with the pitch, and that one's down low. Count goes now to 3-0. and oh. Mason Connolly pinch hitting for the Spuds here in the sixth inning as Tom Wellen delivers, called strike at the knees. And Connolly taking all the way on that 3-0 pitch. 3-1 and one the count. Moorhead scoring one in the second. Two in the fourth, one in the fifth, lead it here for nothing. And there's a pitch out of the strike zone for a walk. Mason Connolly now takes his, Next takes the bag at first, and that moves Skyler Timmer on to second. Noah Pilon will step into bat. Had an excellent performance on the mound, giving up just one hit. Noah Pilon with his first at bat, though, as he stands uh, deep in the batter's box and takes a look at a called strike. Yeah, I, th <coughs> I think that was a good take, though. Um, you know, the struggles after a, a walk and, you know, make the pitcher throw a strike. Runners at first and second, and Pilon bounces one away from the plate and over towards the first base dugout. And it's two strikes to count now on Noah Pilon. The stretch and the delivery down low. A ball and two strikes on Pilon. A check of the runners at first and second, and here's the pitch. Bounce to the left side. Shortstop there to make the play at second. 
with the force up at the relay on the first not in time. And so the play puts a runner now at third, but the four, six, four. Next up for your spuds, number 20, Hudson Hodges. And so Noah Pilon on with the uh, fielder's choice. Trying to get our scorebook in order here. With that out recorded, there is there are two away. As Hudson Hodges comes to bat here in the bottom of the sixth inning. Left leg raised and up on his toes as he waits on the pitch. Out of the strike zone, ball two. A good eye. That didn't miss by much. The pitch just a little bit low. Hudson Hodges waits. And the pitch by Wellen. Called strike. And the count goes to two and one. More at his runners at first and third. Lead of the runner, and here's the pitch down on the dirt, and a quick throw down to first, and it gets away. That will be one, one, one run in, and that also puts the runner on. Noah Pilon checks in at second as the Spuds get the uh, run on the errant throw. And it's now 5 nothing. We're going to call that a wild pitch. Mr. Uh, official scorer? No, no. <laughs> oh, I it thought, was an no, error. you're right. Yeah, I'm sorry. Just yeah. a ball. Yeah. <clears throat> and here's ball four. Next up for your spuds, number eight, Quentin Hag. Hudson Hodges drawing a walk. And Quentin Hag comes to bat as the spuds are taking advantage of a deep dugout as every player so far here in the inning has been off the bench as Quentin Haig looks in and misses down low. Runners now at first and second. The count goes to two and oh. Moorhead with a five nothing lead. Batting here in the bottom of the sixth. Tom Wellen on, third pitcher for Fargo North, delivers. At the knees, called strike. As Wellen delivers, a strike at the knees. And the count evens up at two and two. Pitch missing inside, and it's ball three. Quentin Haig standing in now with a full count. Here's the pitch. Bounce to the left side, and that one is bobbled. Had a chance, Tyler Thresh was coming in on it, coming in quickly on it, and it skipped out of his glove. And the air there puts runners all around, the bases are loaded for Moorhead batting in the bottom of the sixth. Yeah, you know, there's another, just a, a slow roller, and Thresh was going to have a, a tough play to make anyway as Haig runs well down the line, and uh, just the thought of having to rush that throw, not able to pick the ground ball cleanly. That brings up Wyatt Gunkel, and here's a pitch that bounces away. Spuds are ca caught off the bags, but everybody retreats and are back in safely. And the near side, Noah Pilon had a chance, had a notion. He went about a third of the way up the line before he saw that it was going to be retrieved and there would be a play at the plate, and he quickly retreated, leaving the bases full, and the pitch a ball, it's 1-0. and oh. As Tom Wellen delivers, and that pitch in the dirt, but kept in front of catcher Joe Boutain. And it goes to 2-0. Here's the delivery. Missing outside for ball three.
Wyatt Gunkel batting. Two outs, runners at every base. Takes a look, and it's strike one. He uh, fastball called strike. On the afternoon, one for three, Wyatt Gunkel. As he drove in the game's first run, he swings and misses. And the count is full now at three and two. Now this should put the runners in motion here. Three, two, two outs. Everybody's on the go as the pitch is delivered. Swing and a miss, strike three. Wyatt Gunkel down on strikes, but a run comes in in the sixth. And we go to the top of the seventh Where's inning here at Matson Field. It's Moorhead five one, one, and one, Fargo one, North, three, nothing. Five, Three runners left on. After six complete, start. Hayden Netlin completes the trip around the field and hands it off to Chris Santo D'Agostino. As Fargo North comes on to bat here in the top of the seventh inning, leading things off, Peyton Fisher. 0 for 2 on the day. The Spartans have been held to one base hit and are trailing 5 0 as they come to bat in the top of the seventh inning. D'Agostino delivers a swing and a miss, strike one. Noah Pilon came on, pitched very well through four. D'Agostino has come on now to pitch innings five, six, and now seven, and is ahead on the count at 0-2. Peyton Fisher, left-handed hitter, and takes a look at a pitch inside and at the letters, but a called ball, and Peyton Fisher now has a count of a ball and two strikes. Working quickly, D'Agostino delivers up and away. That brings the count even at two and two. As the shadows extend now from the dugout out onto the mound, here's the pitch called strike three. Peyton Fisher down on strikes for the second time this afternoon. Next up for the Spartans, the catcher, number nine, Joe Boutain. And that brings up catcher Joe Boutain. A good, <coughs> good series of pitches there by D'Agostino. Uh, mainly with the fastball and then came back with the breaking ball to get him for strike three. Boutain 0 for 2 in the afternoon and follows that one back to the screen. And D'Agostino looks to be much more confident as his appearance continues as he's throwing the strikes. And here's Joe Boutain now down on the count at 0 and 1 and he follows that one straight back to 0 and 2. Yeah, Boutain. many more pitches, uh, like you said, Larry, right around the, the strike zone in his first uh, few batters that D'Agostino faced. He was kind of all over the place, missing high, missing low, outside. Uh, now everything is right around the plate. The rhythm is there. As D'Agostino, a two-strike count, delivers with one out, and the pitch swung on and fouled back. Boutain just did get a piece of that one to foul it straight back. Both teams back in action again tomorrow. As D'Agostino delivers. Missing inside, and it's one and two. Assistant coach Tony Kunkka was mentioning that coming into today's game, the Spuds had played 
seven games. They'll have six games in this next week of play. Here's a pitch just missing. And they'll put a little hurry on their schedule. Yeah, well, a lot of the early games uh, had to be postponed uh, due to snow mainly. Popped up on the infield. Thomas Horan calls everybody off. He comes floating in on the grass now to make the catch, and there are two away. A pop up to shortstop Thomas Horan. And that brings Jack up Jack Dorsher. And he is one for two. He has North's only base hit of the afternoon. Delivered a single in the fifth inning. As the pitch comes in, and this one is lifted towards center. Moorhead center fielder Caden Triggs is there to make the catch, and the Spuds pick up their seventh win no of the season. The no runs, no hits, no errors, no runs. And a uh, quick uh, recap here this afternoon finds the Spuds with the win, 5 nothing, as they hold Fargo North to just one base hit. Uh, very solid performance by Noah Pilon to get the game underway as he set down the first nine batters he faced. Yeah, and, and quite a, a change of pace between the two pitchers. Noah Pilon very, uh, very accurate in his pitches, uh, worked in quite a few more breaking balls, and then the switch over to D'Agostino with a lot more fastballs. A uh, little bit uh, wild to begin with, but then his control came under um, and then uh, the Spuds were able to use those two pitching performances to ride out the victory here today. With the loss now, North is eight and six heading into tomorrow's game with Shanley. And with the win, the Spuds are now seven and one as they head into tomorrow's doubleheader with Section 8 opponent Bemidji. Thanks for being with us. Corey DeLorme, you have a couple of remarks about your project here with Spuds.tv. Well, just uh, we obviously thank everybody for watching. We've had a lot of a lot a lot of positive feedback. Uh, thousands of people have watched our, our broadcast so far, and uh, we're doing the best we can to to get better every time and work with the the technology as we get used to everything. And uh, hopefully, we've got a lot more to come. Once again, our final score this afternoon at Matson Field in high school baseball it was Moorhead five and Fargo North nothing.